Okay, so just a quick forward. I use a 3D printable design in this build that I have to change at the end because I'm not particularly happy with the design. I also design new end caps for the 50 by 100 millimeter pipe, which is available in Australia, as well as the two American pipe sizes, the vinyl tubing you have in America. I've designed multiple end caps to adapt both the rain gutter grow system, blanking ends, and other new features which I've included in the Australian end caps as well. So if you're interested in that, wait till the end. Other than that, enjoy the video. Welcome back to Hucho's. Today on Hucho's, I'm gonna show you how to build another super simple strawberry system that we can take designs previously discussed in our rock wedge hydroponic system and implement them in our new bagging technique, which we have also explored in a recent video. Okay, so today we're actually going to take four videos and combine them all into one system. We're going to take the rock wedge hydroponic system, the rain gutter grow system, the super simple strawberry system, and the how to make your own custom bagged media video. And we're going to combine them into what I hope is a really effective hydroponic system for growing both strawberries and I'm gonna try and max out the system with cucumbers as well. Okay, so for our rain gutter grow systems, we need the systems to be completely level. So what that means is I need the base to be completely level so I can build up from a level foundation. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so these are the rain gutter grow systems with 3D printable end caps. You can make them without the 3D printable end caps. I've just made them a little bit cheaper for me to make and you to make if you have a 3D printer. So a full rundown of how to make these systems is available in my rain gutter grow system video and throughout the rain gutter grow system playlist. I'm actually raising these a bit higher than I have my IBC and that's because I'm actually going to be adding them to my NFT pressurized system. So the NFT is running 13 millimeter tubing up to the ends and I've got extra tubing coming off the bottom so that I can actually connect up any system that I like. I also use these to water plants that aren't in a system and this will allow me to have these pipes pressurized uh, at the float valve end with half strength nutrient. Now half strength nutrient is what strawberries require. They're about 1.5 EC so I wouldn't be running them on my 2.4 EC gravity feed reservoir. I will be running them off my NFT reservoir that my lettuce is in. This also allows me in the future to have these systems not only suspended on the ground, but I can have them suspended off the structure of the greenhouse as well, and even above my head if I wanted to. So I'm gonna set up my pipes. I'm going to add on some barbed BSP to 13 millimeter connections. I can then add on my hose, like so. At this point, we can check if the system's level by turning on our hose, filling up our rain gutter grow systems and making sure that the water doesn't overflow out of our system. And as you can see, our systems are topping up through our float valve. And we'll just adjust the float valve to where we want the system to top up to. Now, in addition to the two indoor rain gutter grow systems, I want to set up a table of rain gutter grow systems as well, utilizing the same idea. With the ability to raise it above my reservoir, because I've got another 13 mil hose coming off this side of the NFT, I can actually have a table of strawberries set up here. This is where I used to have the hydroponic potato experiment system that was actually rather successful. I packed it all up and moved it to my not used area. And we're gonna set up some scaffolding that I managed to get cheap, level it out, and put down some new rain gutter grow systems, which I'll actually have to make up because I didn't have enough left over from previous builds. <clears throat> okay, so there is the quite real possibility that these pipes won't support the weight of the stuff that I'm actually going to have on top of them, uh, which is the bagged media full of water. 
and the strawberries um, full of fruit, hopefully. My backup plan for that is simply to have planks of wood. And the way that I'll do that is I'll just move the strawberries to the side, plonk the planks of wood down, put the strawberry system back on top. It's really easy fix and it's worth the risk, I think, just getting away without the planks of wood at the start. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're going to have three rain gutter grow systems suspended on top of this platform, this scaffolding, and that's going to be our system. So I'm now gonna set up these pipes as rain gutter grow systems for our bagged media. So for the float end, I will be using the standard float adapter for the 100 by 50 millimeter piping that we have in Australia. This is also available for the vinyl piping that you have in America as well. Both sizes, the three inch and the four inch pipe, I believe they are. I've got these models available on my Patreon as well. But for the other end, because it's not sitting on the ground or anything, I'm going to be using the new style of NFT end, which drains from below. So this prints on this orientation and you just have a little bit of support to build plate only. And that will allow us to drain our system completely as it allows us to drain it from the base. So I'm gonna be adding those to all of my rain gutter grow systems, which are off the ground. So those are available on my Patreon. And I wanna say thank you to all my Patreons that have supported me in my 3D printable designs. All right, let's get this system built. So I'm now going to lay out my bagged media across the system so that I know where I need to put my wick wedges, my rock wedges. So, and this is the bagged media. This is the specific strawberry mix that we'll be using today that we created in the video a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, I bagged up quite a lot of it. And we're going to mark that out. Okay, so the distance that I've come up with is every 300 millimeters. So starting 150 millimeters, 300, 300, 300, all the way down to the end. Now all of the holes cut, I'm going to silicon on our end pieces and let them dry. Okay, so I've let the system sit for a while and we've got a really nice water level across both the channels and it's time to add in our rock wedges. Now, I've got the water level at about 20 mil under the channel, so there's about 30 mil of water and that's plenty enough to get the wicking action happening from the bottoms of the wicks on our rock wedges. So I'm just gonna add these into the system by sliding them in like so. And you can see how the wicks just sit down in the channel and wick up over the top of the spike and into the bag. And for the outside system, I've just got to set up some more rock wedges, but while I'm setting them up, I'm gonna place out some bags on this system and we'll make sure that the wicking is working. So it's just a matter of taking my bag, laying it over the wedges, and then puncturing it and pushing it straight down onto our rock wedges, like so. And that holds the bag in place, as well as supplying the nutrients, which is pretty cool. And I'm just gonna leave those while I prepare the rest of the rock wedges and we can see how they wick up into the bags. And for this end of the system, I'm going to be using 19 millimeter barbed taps and this is just 18 millimeter garden hose, um, which will work with 19 millimeter fittings anyway. So I'm just pushing this onto our barbed taps and that will fit over our barbs on the, this end of our system. And that's gonna give us a nice drain out of our system if we want to replenish the nutrient. So I've just put a dab of silicon around the outside of these pipes 
and now I can just connect up and push on our hose. Okay, so I'm now going to add on the float valves into our system. Then we can plumb up the system, turn on our nutrient from our NFT reservoir and make sure our system is completely level. And we'll just add on our 13 millimeter barb. And this is what you get for not letting the silicon dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to take this one off the system and I'll add it on later. Okay, I'm now going to turn on the tap and fill them up. Okay, so I've got a nice even level across both the channels. The floats are just finishing up, topping up. So I can now add in our rock wedges. And to the top of this, we can add our bagged media. And now we can go back to our other system that I set up a few hours ago. We can cut open the bags and see how the media is wicking. So I'm just gonna put a slit in the bag. We can open it up. Actually, that's wicking rather nicely. You can't obviously feel this, but it is wet. And I'm just gonna open this section up a bit more than I would usually. And get out some media. So you can see there, it is moist. It's not oversaturated. It's just a little bit moist. And that's exactly what we want. And to these systems, I'm going to be adding strawberry runners. And I'll just be adding those directly into the bags. This variant is called Luana. And you can see they come just like that. I'll just be putting the strawberry crowns into the bagged media and hoping for the best. So there should be 10 liters of media in each of these bags. The minimum volume for strawberries is two liters. So that should be almost perfect for the amount of strawberries that I have in each bag. This is a problem I encountered with the super simple strawberry system that I created. I found that there wasn't enough oxygenated root space because half the media was submerged within the pipe itself. So this should give these strawberries enough root space, oxygenated root space, and they'll also have the ability to send roots down through the devices into the nutrient if they want to. So I'm gonna go along and plant out all of this. So all I'm doing is sp splitting the media and then pushing the runner's roots into the media and making sure that the roots are all in contact with that media. Now I am a little bit concerned about the color being black, but the water and nutrient within the bag should keep the roots cool enough. They'll be able to get oxygen from the mix itself because there'll be a gas exchange within the media mix here. So they won't be relying on nutrient solution for oxygen. So I don't think that we'll have too much of a problem. If I do have a problem, I'll just cover these with panda film and have the white side turned up. And the other half I'll be planting today are these QHI sugar babies. <laughs> Luckily, I've got a few runners of these mature strawberries that I can rob. Okay, so after I filmed all of this, last night I came out and the end cap, the end piece that I designed had fallen off the system. And because it was pressurized, it was draining out my NFT reservoir, which is quite annoying. This happened because of, well, the whole design of that 19 millimeter end was kind of off from the start. Because the outside of the print wasn't sealing, I ended up having to seal around the outside with silicon, which is just messy and it's not ideal. This end, the build plate end of the print, seals perfectly, but because it's holding water, it just means that if you don't have your print settings perfect, which I don't think many people do, you just end up with 
water escaping out, little imperfections in the print, and I really don't want people to have to go through what I went through with this. So I'm abandoning this style of print, the 19 millimeter end, for holding water purposes. It's actually perfectly adequate for scenarios like this where it's funneling water because there is no pressure built up. It's just literally funneling the water down into the base pipe. So in those scenarios, this style of print is perfect, but with any amount of pressure behind holding water and nutrient, unless you've got your print settings dialed in perfectly. For most people, this design won't work. So with that, my decision to abandon this end style came and I wanted to redesign the original rain gutter grow system and to be more efficient, which made me come up with this. This is the new style of rain gutter grow system end. It is less filament hungry and it gives you a better seal around a standard garden hose, which makes the entire fitting extremely efficient and extremely tidy. This looks almost identical to the end caps that I had already designed. However, this does not require a 15 millimeter barb. I've redesigned it so that a standard hose will actually slide into the hole at the end, and this will actually seal around the hose fitting, especially when you have a barbed tap fitting like this, pressing in against the end. But even just the hose should seal around this. Worst case scenario, you can silicon around it, but this removes the need for the 15 millimeter barbs that were present in the older version of this system. And these tended to leak. I've also reduced the length that it overlaps onto the system to save filament. And I've done this not only with the Australian ends, but I've also done it with the American ends. This is going to make the end a lot neater, and it's also going to give you just a nicer product in general. As you can see with my old system, it was just a really messy setup, and it didn't give you the full hose diameter to drain. This is a much better design, a much cleaner seal, and it uses less filament as well. And as I said, not only have I done this for the Australian 50 by 100 millimeter pipes, I've also done it for the three and four inch pipes that are available in America. So as you can see here, I have two of the American style and the 3D printable ends which fit over those. I've changed the styles so that they're less filament hungry as well as adding in this feature where you can slide in a garden hose to seal rather than the 15 millimeter barb. Not only that, I've also updated the file so that it includes blanking ends without any holes because I know that some people wanted blanking ends just because they wanted a sealed pipe and they didn't need the holes on the end. So all of those files for both the Australian and the American versions have been updated and are available on my Patreon as of right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this system and I'll give you updates shortly on how it's progressing. I'm really excited to see how it performs and to have a big harvest of strawberries, hopefully. Thank you for watching this episode of Huchos. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time. More problems, more solutions. We always find the solutions. That's the main thing.